welcome back to Witch and the Holy Nights. Yay! Oh. Well, it's part 12, baby. Or Silent Night. More Alice Holy took a night. night. Uh, Alice took a nap. Yes, she did. She sat. She slept on the floor, which makes me concerned about her. But I, excuse you, she didn't sleep on the floor. She slept like uh, next to a pillar. It's still on the floor. She propped herself up next to a pillar. All right, it's fine. She, it's fine. I don't think a pillar is as any is any less harder than the floor. Uh, it's probably it's probably souls. worse to be honest. <laughs> She's just a little sleepy, you know. It's fine. It's She's fine. just a sleepy lass. She's just a little sleepy. A little, a little slumbly. Anyways. <laughs> I was adjusting in my seat. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> the following day. The last day of finals had ended without a hitch. That final December hurdle was finally a thing of the past. For all but one student, that is. To Sojiro, the greatest challenge was yet to come. He bid farewell to his classmates, all jittery with excitement for the last day of term, and headed into the Shiro Inizuka Woods. Wow, that you landed that. <laughs> I know, right? I'm surprised. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> I, I would have guessed the same pronunciation, to be honest. <laughs> well, because I was just like, okay, that's Shiro, and that looks like Shiro Inizuka. That looks Shiro like Inizuka. The... Something yeah. like that. Shiro Inuzuka. Well, because, like, how I said I saw it was Shiro, and then, like, and then I was like, oh, that looks like Inazuma from Genshin Gimpact. Wow, from Genshin Gimpact. <laughs> Genshin Gimpact. <laughs> <laughs> the road home was no different than yesterday. Like he was reliving yet another day striding up that hill. If I only could make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Yet today, there was a fierce determination in his steps. Today was his last chance, and he wanted nothing more than to talk to the girl. Yeah, I want to make her like me. He did not care if she was cruel to him or ignored him, nor whether Alka was being truthful when she said that she could trap him in a mirror, in a mirror land, or something like that. All he really cared about was having the chance to speak with her face to face. But nothing is ever that simple. To tell the truth, what he found upon finally entering the mansion was not wholly unexpected. She dead ass asleep again. <laughs> she sure sleeps a lot. Again? again. My, my love, please pick a different seat. <laughs> On the pillar once more. This reminds me, have you heard of the show, um, uh, Buddy Daddies? Yes. It's a new anime. One of the characters, Ray, he sleeps in the bathtub. And, like, this oh is what God. it's reminding me of. <laughs> in the bathtub. Yeah, it's apparently the theory surrounding it is because, like, if someone breaks into their house, who's going to think he's sleeping in the bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> He'll get the jump on them if he's sleeping in the bathtub. Easy dub. <laughs> the deja vu he was experiencing made him... Dizzy. Faced with an, in, with an exact reenactment of the previous day, he couldn't help but blurt out what he was thinking. Alice was sleeping by the fireplace, just as she had done yesterday. The way her legs draped to one side 
resembled those of a princess in a, cha in a children's book. She looked more comfortable than she had the day before. Miraculously, he had a rare flash of insight that enabled him to read the situation more clearly. Hmm. What could Tobamaru be doing at school on his own? Why is that what you're thinking about right now? <laughs> I... good... Oh, what is Sojiro ever thinking about at any moment? <laughs> you know what, that's so fair. <laughs> Upon glancing back at the entrance, he made his decision. Took a deep breath and rolled up his sleeves. Is he gonna pick her up? And take her to, like, the couch? Oh my god. If today was a reenactment of yesterday, then he supposed he would play along with that idea. Sojuro removed his shoes and headed for the kitchen. Oh, he's oh. just gonna make her more tea, okay. Yeah. He was off to prepare another ill-fated pot of tea. Since she was angry about him using her precious fashion, this time he turned to Jackson's fruit and herb brew. Sadly, this was about as much as Sotaro could manage to amend his behavior. He had failed to realize that it was not the brand of tea that had landed him in hot water, but rather his incorrect brewing method. <laughs> landed him in hot water. I see you, game. <laughs> hot tea leaf water. Hot, hot leaf, leaf juice. juice. <laughs> we, have the, we have the same brain cell. And I'm when we're done with this game, I'm going to make a compilation of every single time we share a brain cell. Every single time that B and Keith make the same joke at the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna slowly just put it all together. I'm sure I'm gonna... the dude, the spike is gonna the spike is just gonna be at the freaking sands. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Fucking hot leaf juice. Hot leaf juice. I'm gonna start the video off with me declaring this and then start with every video. <laughs> <laughs> After filling the pot with tea, he carried it back to the foyer. The foyer, if you will. The foyer? <laughs> You've never heard someone call it that? I. I have a couple times. Don't really like it. <laughs> You can't tell me Alice wouldn't call it the foyer. Okay, Alice would definitely call it the foyer. <laughs> His breath was visible in the cold air as he sat himself down by the fireplace. Sojuro took a sip of the fruity tea he prepared for himself and pulled his textbook from his bag. Mm. Orange. Or Nash. <laughs> Exams were over now, but he had been instructed to take extra classes for the subjects from day one of school. Quite inevitable. The foyer was warmer than outside, but still far from comfortable. It was enough to make anyone yearn for some sort of warmth. I have an idea. Sojuro, figure out how to use the fireplace. So true. Yeah? <laughs> Neither of them do, so... <laughs> Neither of them know how to use it. Both of them have given up. He's got enough time on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Sojuro drove, uh, dove into his, electronic, his electronics textbook in the winter chilled hall. I always forget that electronics textbooks, like, actually existed. Because this is the 80s. And yeah, this they is the were, 80s. Like, this is, like, typewriting classes and shit. And, like, how to use a phone and how to call 911 or whatever the Japanese equivalent does. Oh, yeah, for sure. Wild. <laughs> it, is, it is wild. Like, what is this, 89? Uh, yeah, it's 89, I oof. think. Like, this is a textbook probably both of my parents had. Can't believe Alice is... doesn't have a flat screen. That's a mage. Uh, SMH. Were flat screens? Flat screens were a thing. We looked this up, right? Flat screens oh, were a right, thing yeah. in the 80s. Yeah, I... 
I forget what type of TV they have. She has though. She has like one of those boxy ones. <gasps> right. Because I had that kind of TV. Right. I, I had. Oh, I don't think I ever told you this. I had a Barbie box. Wait, like TV. like with the cells, right? Yes. <laughs> I had a Barbie box TV. Oh my god. That like was in my room, and all I got, like all I was able to do was like watch VHS tapes. Like it didn't have any cable connected to it, and <laughs> ev and I would just watch this the um, Sailor Moon VHS tapes I had. Were they in any correct order? Did I know what order they were supposed to go in? No. But did I like them? Yes. <laughs> and that's what and they mattered. Were, they were come from, from like completely different seasons. Like one of them was like, uh, one of them was like before. Uh, Sailor Mini Moon showed up, and then others were like way after she showed up. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Where like Sailor Uranus and Neptune show up, and like it was it was wild, <laughs> absolutely wild. So true. <laughs> Anyways, VHS uh, tapes. The class was not very popular, which is why it had been recommended to him in the first place. That fact that the fact that everyone who took it started on equal footing made it more appealing to him than other classes. Fair enough, actually. <sighs> now Zaka was right. He downed the rest of the tea, having no appreciation for its flavor, and refilled his cup. Hmm. More ornad juice. <laughs> it's not even orange it's not even orange juice sojuro it's not even orange juice if anything it probably would if it's fruity it probably would taste like either cranberries strawberries or cherry oh yeah yeah for That's sure if it's like in a tea think. you know <laughs> yeah those are the main kinds kinds of fruits usually people i mean orange slice maybe is put into tea but yeah. normally you don't make orange tea not normally a thing but they are they are fancy so maybe part of the fruit is an orange and oranges are technically citrus fruits right anyways <laughs> already 12 minutes in we've barely covered the first scene it's fine it's fine we got it. <laughs> that's what happens when we play the tea was still warm since the ceramic teapot had excellent heat retention well i hope so I, I, me too. I can't seem to remember anything that's written down. Oh, I will say one more thing. Um, hmm? so before, uh, Mr. Nineteen, uh, hit in 2020, um, Mr. we used to have. That's what I'm calling it. Um, Fair. I don't want to get demonetized. I don't. I don't make money, but like, I don't want to get flagged or anything. The vid. <laughs> the vid, Mr. Vid Nineteen. Um. So we had these things at this uh, place, not too far from my mother's house, where it was a uh, mother-daughter princess tea party. And you would mm -hmm. drink tea and all this other stuff. But the best thing was, is that they would have teapot raffles and you could win teapots. Yo! And I've got, I won, before they had to cancel them and they haven't brought them, brought them back. Um, but I had two, I earned two in my time. Oh, nice. I don't think I have any at my dad's house. I'm looking around trying to see if I have one in here. <laughs> but I think I only have them at her house. Because I think they're like in our main living room. They're very cute. So, just fun fact of the day. Oh, for sure. He's very <laughs> he vague, he sure vaguely... It's very cute. They're very cute. One of them has like lily pads on it, which oh, I'm nice. sure... I'm sure Yuki would go crazy for it. <laughs> Because it's Yuki, my little frog yeah. son. Yes. <laughs> he vaguely recalled their conversation as his eyes had adv advanced across the page. The lack of lighting in the foyer <laughs> was forcing him to rely on illumination from the skylight. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> just, just read, just read. Just read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the light cut into the room at a diagonal angle in such a way as to divide 
the foyer into light and dark areas with the fireplace in shadow. Good. <laughs> the room resembled ancient ruins covered in ash. Nor perhaps the quiet forgotten world of a faded fairy tale. Time slipped on by time slipped on by within the white walls of this room, hidden away from the sun. I don't know, the sun's coming in pretty brightly. It is that is a pretty bright sun. Well, it's winter, so it's like muted. Oh, that's muted fair enough. sun. Uh. The minutes pass slowly for some time until the sound of a textbook slamming shut brought the room back to reality. Whoops, there goes back gravity. Back to reality. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> Sojiro stretched his stiff back and eagerly got started on cleaning up. He put his textbook back in his bag, placed his cup on the tray, leaving Alice, Alice sitting in leaving Alice sitting in front of her on the floor. Leaving Alice sitting in front of her on the floor. Okay. Reading. The spacing of those lines irks me. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Okay. Understandable. Mm -hmm. Well, time to go to work. He said. Unceremoniously. He spoke as if to convince himself that he had no other choice as he prepared to leave the sleepy foyer behind. But before he could... Oh, Alice is gonna wake up. Alice A sound behind him night. stopped him in his tracks. He turned around with his bag under his arm and his tray in his hand. So as not to cause even a ripple in her teacup, he greeted her. Yeah. Hey. Had it. In, <laughs> in a light, easygoing manner. She remained seated next to the fireplace like a black-eyed sleeping beauty. Her face was as still as a statue. Almost no different than it had been in slumber. Looking at Alice now, he realized just how different she and Alco really were. Does she have a soul? Debatable. Does she have pupils? No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. At least it doesn't look like it. Granted, when you draw black-eyed characters, you don't really need pupils, considering there's no need to, like, really deviantiate, especially considering how black do you want to go? Like, how deeper in color do you want to go? So. Fair. Alko communicated her feelings openly, even if he never could quite tell where they came from. Her trademark expression of irritation would keep him guessing as to the reason she was angry, but to her credit, her emotional state was always clear. Alice, on the other hand, was completely unreadable. She might be angry, or then again sad. He could not tell either way. None. What do you think you're doing? Her question gave him a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. He could not decide whether it was animosity or perplexity that he that he heard in her voice. And if the former, this was likely to turn into a ply of their interaction from the other night. An image of the shattered bottle sprang to his mind. 
Sojuro knew his response would be extremely important. And after struggling for a few moments, he finally worked up the courage to say something. Oh, no. Just not the correct thing, oh, no. unfortunately. Well, rest in peace, Sojuro. 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 You were a fun man. Oh, no. With a funny voice. You will be rest loved. Forever. Sojuro, uh... <laughs> oh, By the no. bears. One uh -oh. and only the bears. Oh, no. Oh, speaking of bears, have you guys heard about the Cocaine Bear movie? I have heard of the Cocaine Bear movie. No! I what? have heard of it. She, The okay. person who made it wants to make more movies <clears throat> of animals on cocaine. I, that's it's, the dumbest it's, thing I've ever heard. Okay, it's a quote-unquote based on a true story. No! Who the fuck thought it was a good idea to give cocaine to a bear? Come it on. was an accident? Uh... Or, so well, yeah, happened... right, I remember it was an accident. Okay, oh. okay, let me... So, the, the true story of it is that there was a guy trying to fly, like, 15k dollars of cocaine across, like, the mountain range border of, like, the Himalayas or something, I don't know. Something like that. It was a mountain range. And, uh, the plane was going down. He strapped some to him. Uh, his, uh... Because he had all that cocaine on him, his parachute didn't deploy. He smacked onto the ground. The cocaine went splooing into the air, and a bear sniffed it and went wild and went on a killing spree. That's what the movie's based on. Oh, and then it died of a heart attack. Yeah. Because that's a lot of cocaine. There's a lot of cocaine. Is the pilot still alive? I don't know. He's probably yeah. dead, right? Yeah, probably. Who knows? I don't. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so. uh, Sojuro is dead. Um, Sojuro is not gonna die. He's our baby. Right. About that. It'll take a while to explain, so let me just have a seat first. You shouldn't be sitting. You should stay on your feet. It's rude. <laughs> He had no idea what the correct approach would be, so he simply did whatever came to his mind instead. <clears throat> she gave him no response. Her face said that she detested his presence, but he plowed ahead regardless. Sojuro took a seat and set down the tray once more. Their eyes met. His inscrutable gaze was enough to turn most people away. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. You're such a baby. Hold on. I need oh my god. <laughs> it's important. Look at him. He's so cute. He looks like such a simple man. He's, he's, I he's love him. four dimensions behind everyone. <laughs> we love him. I love him. I want a figurine of him like, right <laughs> the fuck now. Literally, I would, I would, I'd give, I'd get it. I, I have two kidneys. I can give one up for him. What? <laughs> I, I, I don't need to. <sighs> Yeah, well, no, that's fine. Uh, okay. Anyways. <laughs> but the target of her animosity appeared not to notice it at all. Yeah, because he doesn't care. Yes. Ah, well, guess I should have done it a long time ago, but I've been wanting to talk to you about something, Alice. Despite having suggested that it would take time to explain, he managed to sum things up succinctly. Is that how you write succinctly? I uh, yeah. That is so awkward. I hate how that's spelled. Can't, I don't know why. Can't but spell it just... suck succinctly without suck. Um. <clears throat> anyways, 
suck. Uh, dick. <laughs> Seven, you good? <laughs> Seven, you alright? I just said suck. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. Suck. It'd be like that, though. Suck! So true. So to true. To another dimension. So true, Seven the Vampire. So true. And fails to sink fully without ink. Me? Not Alko? Hmm? Hmm? Well, I have lots to talk to Aozaki about. In fact, I think all of us should sit down at some point. Alice found herself out of kilter, unable to read his true intentions. He just wants to chat with you guys, but like, come on, it's, it's not that hard. He just wants everyone to be friends. It's not Look, that hard. <laughs> this boy's head is empty. I don't think you need much to uh, figure out his true intentions. You can <laughs> shine a light into one of his ears and see it come out the other side. <laughs> and that's why we love him. Rio. <laughs> Sojiro continued on, none the wiser of her bewilderment. Aozaki said you two rarely speak to each other. I'd feel bad if that's because of me, but I'd feel even worse if it ain't. It's sad that we live together, but never talk. Each word he spoke was heavy with emotion. Alice remained utterly unable to discern this boy's intentions. Alice, keep up the pace. <laughs> Come on. She just doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> all she could per phrase. Parse? All she could parse? Parse. Yeah, parse. Yeah. All she could parse was that there was something he wanted from her. Oh, yeah. A, a chat? Friendship. <laughs> Hand-holding! Hand -hold Let's go back to Kitsy Land. Oh my god. But what could that be? What she found even stranger was that he was not speaking to her from a place of fear. Mostly just <laughs> emptiness. <laughs> Head empty. Aren't you... afraid of me? Hmm... No. I don't know enough about you to be scared of you. Tell the truth. Oh, you know what I was thinking about today? Mm -hmm. What? Well, uh, we have only seen the lady with short hair in the weird green outfit. Once. Is this gonna be like... I'm I know it's not scared. going to be, <laughs> but it's like... I know it's probably not going to be, but is this going to be like a like a um, Yamizuka, thing? Yamizuka thing? Yamizuka, where she's just like there once, and then like we don't talk to her. Like we don't even. Like... I I don't know. I, I have I no idea. Because like no, no, definitely not. I don't think so. At least because I like I think not. Otherwise, otherwise, the thing I got spoiled about on like what her name is, because like I accidentally got spoiled on what her name was. It's going to be real fucking weird if we only see her, like, twice, like, that once, and then, like, at the end of the game or something. Like, I I hate that. If that's <laughs> going to be the case. Because I fine. would like it if it didn't. Fair. I'm Can sure you know? I'm sure she'll be back. I mean, it's not like I... there's branching paths. <laughs> that's so true. There's only one path. And we. And if she doesn't appear in, appear in it at all, I'm going to be very angry. Right. <laughs> Cause I think she's the one who's doing all the puppeteering bullshit. Fair. Who else would it be? Right. It's f it's the fucking teacher with his closed eyes bullshit. <laughs> Rowa. No, not in this timeline. Not I yet. think Ro is still. He's probably still healing. Yeah, he's Before probably he still the next body. He's probably still dead. <laughs> You know, quote unquote. And, and, I mean, and death Gilgamesh. is temporary for him. <laughs> not Gilgamesh. No. Not that bullshit. Not him. Not yet. Um. <laughs> He's not here yet. I no no. We're talking about Weissman. You know, closed eyes. Anyways. Oh my god, that bullshit. White man. Oh my god. 
Her gleaming、uh, eyes looked like they were made of polished quartz. I, I do love child soldiers. So true. <laughs> I think I think the white of her, like the little like eye shines, are so cute right now for her. Look at her.、It、She、is. actually looks、It、cute、is. instead of like menacing. It's a、uh, black and and、uh, sus suspenseful. Yeah, she looks. She looks actually like her age for once, rather than like looking like she could just rip your heart out in one fell swoop. She probably could, but I mean, you know. I mean,、If、she only, still can. If only this was the light novel where you could choose. Unfortunately, you cannot choose. Right, I don't think、fine. you can choose in the light novel. Oh, and、uh, <laughs> I guess visual、no. novel. I mean,、sorry. this is a visual novel. <laughs> That's what I meant. I didn't mean like novel, I meant visual novel. <laughs> Fine. I'm sure、you、we'll get to Kara、okay. no Kyokai at some point, but like at that point, we're just gonna watch the movies. <laughs> yes, we're just gonna watch the movies, and then while we're watching the movies, we're gonna play Fate Stay Night. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put disappointed dad pictures over everything. Disappointed dad pictures over all the sex scenes. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna put、uh, prototype Arthur over Artorias. <laughs> And along with,、uh, oh my god, I had the fucking I forgot his name because my brain is stupid.、Uh, Emmy's dad, Kir Kiri, Kiri Tsuga. Kiri, yeah. I always forget. I sometimes I just forget his name for some reason because I'm just like, yeah, that guy. Because <laughs> it's like I'm I'm terrible with names. All right. It is a lot longer than Shiro, so. Yeah. Because listen, if the name isn't like four four letters or less, I either don't know how to spell it or don't remember what it is. <laughs> in in Sojuro's case, I remember it. I just don't know how to fucking spell it. Fair. That's why anytime I talk about him, I'm just like my little boy, because I don't know how to spell fucking Sojuro. There are two translations for like Sojuro, so yeah, you know. One has like two U's in it. Yeah, one has two U's. One has a Y. Uh. Does this one have a Y? Yes, this one has a Y. Anyways,、uh, next line. <laughs> Polish chords. See, the Sojuro I know is the one from、um, Sona. <laughs> Fair. <clears throat> his response had not. Ah, his response had not been what she expected. He spoke with pure honesty and un an unfettered truth. Such boldness, however, did not actually upset her. Yo, <laughs> he lives. He can still live another day. Their conversation ground to a halt. If you could even call it a conversation in the first place. Alice grew tense, as if displeased by the strangely comfortable moment of silence between them. So Juro ended her cold stare, showing no sign of flinching, or endured her her cold stare, showing no sign a sign of flinching. Blah, English! Oh my God! It'd be like that. <laughs> Talk. Oh. <laughs> okay. Speak, dog. Hmm? What? What the fuck? They called him a dog. They're like, you live less than a dog. At one point,、oh, yeah. they, that's what they said. Alko said that. Yeah. You said you wanted to talk to me. So, be my guest. Whatever topic you guest, like. Be our guest. Be my guest, be my guest. Dee dee dee. Put our service to the test. Starts doing a、um, ragtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kick line. It was more challenge than an invitation.、Uh, more a more a command than anything else.、Uh... Go ahead. I dare you to converse with me. Speak. He had neither a topic on hand, nor were they intimate enough to strike up a casual conversation. Uh, that's what we're having. <laughs> it hasn't rained yet. 
It's snowing. Why would it rain? It's fine. Uh, it's cold fine. rain. It cold. It cold rained on the first day of uh of the entire story. Oh yeah, that, that's it did. true. Yeah. Well, I should know. I just rewatched the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, her challenge hanged in the air, waiting for a response. Well, what about that bird? Uh, the blue one over there. I see it around every- I see it around every now and then. Is it your pet? Or is it one of those, uh, what are they called? Uh, ploys? A magical familiar? The murder eyes are back. I like the little oh. stars on him. He's such a little baby. Hold on, let me... Oh. No, no, go back. Oh, I oh take God. It. Uh, you broke it! How could you break it? Okay, we're fine. <laughs> I took a picture of the cute bird. Alright. <laughs> the bird. Her eyes slip for a moment. A very nap in... Her eyes slip for a moment, a very natural response. I feel like there's supposed to be a comma there, but alright. It was annoyance. Such as that which one might feel towards a troublemaker. <gasps> yes, it's a ploy. But the stupid bird isn't mine. It's lived here longer than I have. And I'm afraid I don't know much about it. That's... ominous. This bird is the tenant of the house. It's secretly like her dad's soul or something. I... oh my god, there's a non-zero chance that it might be, and I'm scared <laughs> of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's lived here longer than her, it probably isn't, because she's actually like spoken with her dad, but it might be one of our ancestors. Right? I'm afraid. No. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm scared of that it's bird. It's Roa. <laughs> Roa reincarnated into a bird. As a as a ploy, just in case, and just until he can get his like thing up. No, oh, dead apostle. It's always Roa. Dead apostle ancestor. Dead apostle bird. Dead apostle bird. Dead apostle bird. You mean it just decided to live here of its own free will? Of course not. I would never allow such a thing. Robin's useless, but I inherited it from my mother. As such, I permit it to continue living here, despite its constant failures and shortcomings. Oh, so it was her mom's. Okay. Huh. Also, ouch. Yeah, that's really rude. Yikes. Robin is such a good baby. Why would you say that? I see. That's a relief. Here I was thinking I'm the only useless one in the house. <gasps> so you don't know. Oh, no. She turned away in silence to avoid looking at him haplessly. His hapless grin. Thus began Sojiro's very lengthy monologue. Have fun. Oh boy. <laughs> it started with his part-time job. Oh great, I get to tell you about his monologue. <laughs> you don't even get to read it. Dang. It started with his part-time job. Then moved on to sl the school. Next came the amusement park. And random gossip around town. And last subject of rent. He spent all of 20 minutes on mindless small talk. Then he ran out of things to say, and finally stopped. <laughs> ah, sorry, I'm on the clock soon, so I should get going. I'm just imagining an entire Mr. Hippo monologue, especially considering the sun is a, has moved quite a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> Gonna have you... to do with Mr. Hippo 
with uh with a southern accent now, Keith. My oh, friend, Lord. you made you you have made a terrible, terrible demise. But uh, you know, I, I don't feel <laughs> oh, too bad God. about it. After all, if it ain't for me, it, it would have just been someone else, you know? I guess what I'm trying to like... say is life well life goes on. Not not for you, of course. <laughs> you're you're dead. You're dead. It's... I feel like I feel like it would be really you know what, for April Fools, I might do a sexy Mr. Hippo. <laughs> well my sexy attempt Mr. Hippo. And it, my attempt where it's like My dear friend, you have met a horrible, horrible demise. <laughs> but not for you, of course. And you're dead. What? <laughs> Sojiro, Sojiro, Sojiro at the snark. <laughs> That's the snark's voice. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. The the snark's voice is. <laughs> yeah, the voice. Uh, sans, sans yeah. and nark. <laughs> snark is just an anagram of sans with a yes. K and a R. K. <laughs> the snark after not surviving. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh, by the way, I looked up uh, what kind of, like, fairy tale the Robin could be from. Um, Robin Hood? I found one that's a more, like, folklore, um, where there is a King Robin. There's this kid who likes killing small birds. And then the King Robin finds out that he's done this. And then he orders the wolves to dig a large grave in which the monkeys roll this boy, his father, and the um, and a bird lime figure into cover it up, and like hide their bodies. Oh my because god! Because he kept killing his uh, the Ro King Robin's like subjects, right. so he killed them. Yeah, fair enough. And then the other one I found was called Rob the Robin and the Bear, which you know, it's kind of more like a, a fable where it's like you learn something from the end of it and it's, you know, the tiny robin and the big scary bear. Sojiro? Is Sojiro so. the bear? You know, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I don't, I haven't read it, like, all the way through, but, um, but the robin dies at the end of it. Oh no. So, no, no. I... The robin dies. So, I don't know what's going on or what fairy tale this robin could be from because i just looked up fairy tales with robins in it and it's not really giving me much so i mean to be fair he always could just be robin hood but he's just a literal robin yeah with no hood isn't the isn't alice's whole deal like alice in wonderland and the fairy tales of mother goose is yeah, kind of. Two? Um, well, no, it's just mostly just fairy tale based. Uh, just voice. generally fairy tales, not just yeah. Alice in Wonderland and not just Mother Goose fables. Uh, yeah, because the snark gotcha. isn't. Because the snark, or no, the snark is Alice in Wonderland. Gotcha. I think. I don't know. I don't even she know if there's any Robins in either of those. Right? So I don't know. I look up Robins, Mother Goose. Uh, anyways, and that was that. After finally getting his long-awaited chance to talk to her, he realized he had no exit plan in place. Uh-oh. So he returned the tray to the kitchen, placed his bag in the foyer, and headed for the door. <laughs> that was his exit plan. Just exit. Just exit. Oh, okay, I did find a nursery rhyme Ooh. called The Robin, and it's really fucking short. It just says, The north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow. And what will poor Robin do then, poor thing? He'll sit in the barn and keep himself warm. He hides his head under his wing, poor thing. And that's it. Hmm. So, but I'm trying to see if there's, like, anything that has to do with stars. But there's, like, nothing. Interesting. Granted, it could just be a cute design choice, but... I mean, maybe if it's referring to the King Robin, um, the stars I mean, are, like, is a on crown. His... Yeah, the, what, there is one directly on his forehead. Right. But, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. 
Strange, strange, strange. Big but thing. Always Google it directly. <laughs> yeah, why would I do that? That's that's cheating. That's, that's true. Really. That's true. I know. I know. That's that's cheating. That could lead to spoilers. I've already been spoiled once by the Titan Moon bot. <laughs> it's bullshit. She had never seen the boy so candid. Which was why, overcome with surprise, she found herself calling out to him. Wait. She had no she had no reason to do so, yet she called out anyway. Hmm? Hmm? Yes? Look at him, look at the young boy, look at the young man. He. Look at him. I can't wait to see what's underneath that goddamn thing. <laughs> Those bandages. It's just... I saw the pot you used today. Oh, right. I wasn't going to make the same mistake as yesterday. But I guess I'm the only one who drank any today, so... Well, that pot is normally used for coffee, so you shouldn't put tea leaves in it. Sojuro's eyes grew wide with shock. There's a difference! Now he remembered that there were... That there had been all sorts of cups and teapots in the cupboard, each one specifically designed for a different type of tea. Oh no, there was so much to brew in tea. <sighs> I guess a beginner like me shouldn't mess with things you don't understand, huh? She let out a vexed sigh. <sighs> Why didn't you wake me? Either she had not heard what he said, or she had been waiting this whole time for a chance to ask him that. In any case, her question abruptly interrupted his stream of thought. He fell silent with introspection. The thought of waking her had not so much as crossed his mind either that day or the previous one. Tell me. You didn't wake me. Did you expect me to just keep sleeping? Her eyes were filled with animosity. Lies were useless against such an all-piercing gaze. The settling sun transformed the foyer into a battle of life and death. The lies or deceptive answers would not be permitted. Amidst the palpable tension that filled the room, where any move, wrong or otherwise, was likely to get him killed, he felt pain rather than fear. Alice's voice was icy cold, pre premeditatively rejecting any response he was going to give. The boy vaguely imagined a newborn chick that had fallen from the nest struggling to survive on its own. It gasped, hanging on to a thread of hope, yet detesting where they where that thread hung. Do you really wanna know? Alice nodded sharply. It's all you could all. Fine, but it's not especially meaningful or anything. I just think it's rude to wake someone who's asleep. I have no time for jokes. Oh, my lord, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> lord have mercy. <laughs> that is the truth. I just thought I should let you sleep. I really wanted to talk, but I decided to wait till next time we saw each other. 
How sweet of you. That reminds me. Alko's protective... Alko's protection over you ends today. Doesn't it? He's dead. He's dead. That makes this your last chance to win me over. So, have you, or have you not, learned your lesson? Hmm? He had not. <laughs> he swore to her, agreed to her terms, and gone as far to sit face to face with her to get to know her. Surely, he thought, that was enough to escape death. And she believed, as a mage, that his naive goodwill and simple-mindedness were all the reasons she needed to execute him. Trivial misunderstandings would only make things worse at this point. What lesson? What am I supposed to have learned? All this magic and magecraft stuff is way over my head. All I know I've done is ever- all I know is I've done everything you and Aozaki have asked of me. Then why? Her gaze said what she really wanted to ask. I love the fact that I was like wide awake and then as soon as we started playing I'm yawning like my life fucking depends on it. <laughs> It'd be like that. Her gaze said what she really wanted to ask. She wanted to know why he did not beg for his life. She knew the answer. She saw the look on his face when he turned to leave without so much as trying to wake her. A look of resignation. What on earth had it meant? <laughs> what do you expect me to say? I thought if the opportunity didn't present itself, then so be it. When I saw you sleeping again, I didn't know what to do. You're not exactly the easiest person to approach, you and, and Aozaki. Although, Aozaki is a little different. Sojiro struggled to find the right words, but said what he was feeling in the moment anyway. He'd seen a sleeping witch on, of the wood, who clearly needed someone's help, yet sought the help of no one. But here you are, trying to approach me anyway. Even though the opportunity never presented itself. Oh, but it did. That's why I decided to do things my way today. Even if nothing could go right with it to begin with. You talk as though you always expected me to reject you. Uh, yeah, I guess it's hard to explain. Sojiro glanced at the entrance. Man, I'm gonna be late. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get to work. He had no reason to. He just felt an urge to do so. I doubt I'm the only one who'd like to see the situation solved. He muttered, as if speaking to himself, but it was clearly meant for her to hear. Alice knew full well how poorly he had understood the situation. All of this was one giant misunderstanding on his part. His tiny gesture of goodwill, pitiful and pure, resembled that of someone reaching out to help a dying kitten. For Alice, doing so would be akin to clutching the thorns of a rose. 
She felt pain in her chest for the first time in quite a while. I still don't want you in the mansion. She dressed the floor at her feet to avoid showing him how she truly felt. If he had, he would have seen that her face looked just the way Alko's had earlier. I'm sure you don't. And I doubt that'll change anytime soon. But that doesn't mean we can't work something out. It's okay if you keep hating me in the meantime. I want a body pillow, so do <laughs> He He deserves all of the cuddles in the world. Real. So true. <sighs> oh, speaking of body pillows, mm. I have a oh, Kazuha okay. one, obviously. You what? Oh, I have right. I one. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. And I'm in a cosplay group, and they were like, hey, when we all meet up again, um, do we want to do Genshin Maid at you? Like a maid cafe thing. Like, not a, we wouldn't be a cafe, but mm -hmm. yeah. Like, characters dressing up as, like, maids and butlers. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, how many characters do I have? So, and I, so I was, like, starting to name them. And I was like, I can be Kazuha, Lisa, Rosaria, Ayato, Diluc, Miss Hina. <laughs> and I realized I had, like, seven different characters I could be. Remember and I was like... On you. <laughs> Remember the convention we went to? Keith had a uh, Genshin cosplay cafe. We didn't. We couldn't go to it, but yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I saw that. I was like, that would have been cool to go to, but I think it was like not possible for us. To. I can't remember why we couldn't go, but I just remember we couldn't. I don't yeah, know. I was. I was like, I, I have that. so many Genshin wigs, and I've like used only like two of them. <laughs> Because, like, I have Rosaria's wig that I got on, like, a whim because I am that pale that all I would probably need is some, like, gray sparkly eyeshadow and then I'd be set. <laughs> <laughs> like, just put that underneath my eyes. All right, Rosaria, done. I still need to buy <laughs> my wig. And then I have to well, cut it because... Oh, also, my Arco... I need to figure out how to track my Arcoid necklace because it still hasn't come in yet. Oh, no. Dang. I'm sad. Anyways, her, her gasp of breath was like a response in and of itself. Gasp. To suggest she could keep hating him. When he's so cute. She'd once wished to hear those words so dearly, only the once. I died, also. I mean, you're not the only one. That goes for Aozaki, too. I don't think she wants me here, either. Expecting to feel welcome would be a big mistake on my part. We're fundamentally different people, and that's never gonna change. I just want you to tolerate me. I know it's a lot to ask, but is there a way I can live without bothering you too much? Thinking that, of course, it would it was possible, but if it were that easy, none of this would have hap would have been necessary in the first place. Malice nodded in agreement. There was no way he could have would could have planned for things to work out this well. But his plan, in fact, had worked, if. Inadvertently, from the moment the conversation began. You mean, so that I can sleep undisturbed, even with you sitting right next to me? Sure, why not? <laughs> Beaming, Sojuro stood up and left the foyer. Oh no, I'm gonna be late to work. Oh shit, Man I gotta is run. too wholesome. Absolutely. See, this is the thing that like I wish uh, we had in America 
where like you have lockers in Japan at the like work stores and your like uniform is just in that locker. So like he didn't even have to change to go to work. Oh yeah, no, he didn't. He just had to sprint to work. Zip zom zippity. Yeah, he zip zap zopped over all the way over there. Zip zap zop. <laughs> Alice did not stop him this time. He had a newfound spring in his step as he headed to work. But something gave him a moment's pause. Hmm. You know, it's not nice to spy on people. Is it the bird or is it Alko? He complained aloud to make sure a certain someone heard him. Place your bets. Yeah. Hi. Ah. <laughs> no more than two minutes had pass passed since Sojiro left the mansion when a long-haired figure came creeping into the foyer. Alko Aozaki had been just outside the entire time eavesdropping. When did you get home? With a sullen glare, Alice addressed the interloper. Alko was shivering from head to toe after standing in the cold for so long. Uh, Alko, come on. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> what? I said Alko, didn't I? Uh, no, no, you did, but... <laughs> oh, okay. I thought for a minute that I had said, like, the wrong name. I was like, no, I said Alko. No, no, oh. as in... <laughs> no, 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 I she, get... she... no, I know. <laughs> she was standing out there for so long. Like, damn, you shouldn't have done that, lady. You're now you're cold. Now you have frost spitten fingers. How does that feel? I bet it feels like shit. She she deemed gloves an abomination and refused to wear them, except in the most extreme cold. As a result, her slender fingers were pitifully swollen and red. Oh, no. Absolutely. Though I kind of get it though. You know, uh, fair enough, I guess. It depends on what kind of like texture the gloves are made out of. Like, I have to have unseamed gloves, otherwise, like the texture of it, like on my fingers, makes me like want to set a fire. Oh, I see. So it could be a whole texture thing, and I'm also this is like the '80s. True. Gloves were not well made then. True. True. They were either made out of leather or scratchy wool. There was no in between. Oh, and if God, there was, yeah. they were expensive. Or fell apart easily. Dunno. A while ago? Anyway, how did it go? You two were talking for so long. She looked strangely elated as she blew on her hands to warm them. <sighs> Alice was not fooled at all by Alko's facade, clear from the ill-tempered look she wore on her face. I never expected you to be so overprotective. But did you do it out of stubbornness or obligation? Oh, please. I was just going with the flow. But seriously, how did it go? You told me you'd resort to force if he made you mad. And see, he's still got all ten fingers and toes. <laughs> <sighs> Alice's mood was growing darker and darker the longer she had to look at Alko's cheerful posture. It all went back to it, went back to their dinner together the previous night. Flashback. I guess. It's yet another flashback. Woo! This game really enjoys flashbacks. It does. After everything that happened in the foyer, in the foyer. <laughs> oh my god. Alice was both more suspicious of and intrigued by Sojiro than ever before. She insisted that Alko let him walk home alone the next day. 
Oh, so she insisted he he walk home. Hmm. Interesting. So she wanted to talk to him, and then was she fake sleeping? Hmm. Was she just like faking sitting there so that way she'd be in his line of sight to see what would happen? Fair. Yeah, maybe. Because, I mean, that would make sense for her to be there twice in a row. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. She then used a, a concoction to fake her slumber and recreate the same scene as the previous day. She did. She faked it. So real of her. <laughs> what a time. <laughs> what a time. So true. Question, do you think do you think Sojiro likes dino nuggies? I feel like he would like dino he'd nuggies. Like, he'd love dinosaur nuggets. I, I think he would really love them. Absolutely, he'd love he them. asked on the first day if they ha have any dino nuggies at the mansion. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, if you don't, I can use a little bit of my paycheck to go get some. <laughs> I mean, you got you guys have an oven, right? Or maybe like a little little tiny oven, like one of those little fancy ones you see on TV. Tiny, easy bake. It's like, can you imagine he buys himself an Easy Bake Oven just to make dino nuggies? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined Alka just being like, give me that. <laughs> you make brownies with this. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is it. This is for sweets, not savories. God. And then she makes it explode. <laughs> Somehow. Give the boy Somehow his dino nuggies. <laughs> Get the boy his raptor claws and dino nuggets. Oh, other side note. Um, mm -hmm. they The raptor claws that I got, they do have dino nugget form. Oh. Instead of just being claws, they have dino nuggets. So it's like, it's like Jurassic World dinosaur nuggets. But I didn't pick them up because I wanted the raptor claws just for the meme. Fair. But after I finish those, you know I'm going back for the dino nuggets. Oh, for sure. So... And then it'll have dinosaur facts on the back. Maybe. I don't know. If the, <laughs> if the raptor claws have raptor facts on the back, then they have to have dino nuggets facts on the, on the back of the dino nuggies. <laughs> Anyways. Alice plan. <laughs> what was it? That portion of her plan went well, but the rest had veered totally off course. It didn't help to know her roommate had savored every moment of it from the moment or from the other side of the wall, either. <laughs> to make matters worse, Alice was frustrated at herself for letting such trivial matters bother her. Also, if I lived with Sojuro, I would be, like, so happy that he doesn't wake people unnecessarily. Because... <laughs> I feel so bad. I went yeah. on a trip. I went on a trip and... The, the person I was with um, went to like wake me because I hadn't set an alarm because I was like oh I'll wake up in time it's all good um, I do not do well to people waking me up because I literally like eyes stark open literally started like getting out of like jumping out of bed and I spooked them so bad they fell on their ass oh my god because it's like it's like an instant, just like, I'm up! Because, <laughs> like, I that ha that was just, like, how my body reacts to being, like, woken up. It's just an immediate, like, oh my god, is there a fire? Oh my god, am I late? Oh my god, like, there's, like, a, it's that immediate, like, heart racing, like, I need to get out of bed right now because someone's waking me up and I'm late. What am I late for? I don't know. I could, I could literally, it could literally be a day where I have no work and I went to bed knowing I do not have work. But if someone wakes me up, my first thought is I am late for something. That is the immediate body reaction is I'm late. <laughs> it's great. It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> 
She stared at the teacup still sitting on the floor. Is the tea still hot? No, it's cold. Because <laughs> he was probably sitting there for like three hours. Her pale finger traced its cold rim. Can we stop talking oh, about how pale and slender her fingers are? I don't like it. <laughs> it's as you said. He's harmless. For the time being. Son of a Alice, come on. <laughs> well, but it could be something to do with underneath his bandages. She saw it. Alco didn't. We don't even know what the fuck is under there. Fair enough. What if he has like a demon tattoo? That demon tattoo. What if what if he's what if he's in a gang and he doesn't even know it because it's on his neck? <laughs> Who knows? Dead apostle so true. Dead apostle so true. No, no, no! We can't do that to my boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he needs to be protected and wrapped up in a little blanket burrito. <laughs> She forced a tone of indifference in order to hide her ir her irritation with her apprentice. Sometimes I forget that Alice is like teaching Alco. Like, oh yeah, she's no, for above sure. her. Yeah, because they're the same age. They are the same age, and they do bicker a lot like roommates rather than like student to teacher. You know? Yeah, like I feel like they they act. Well, I mean, Alice. I mean, Alco acts her age. Mm -hmm. Like she tries to be like. I'm I'm an adult. I know what I'm doing because she's like president yeah. of the school, but she definitely acts her own age. Right. Whereas Alice is, you know, the cold queen where right. she's like, I've been taught. I'm highly skilled, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't show her age that much. Right, for sure. Which is like the interesting dichotomy of the two of them, I think. Yeah. <sighs> it was in this moment that Sojuro's fate was decided. I mean, to me... Uh, like Alko seems to be like trying to chase the mage, st the mage's lifestyle, yeah, in a way, and like gets a little farther at it than like Reen does, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms well, of and also, like, sorry, sorry, you can continue. Sorry, uh, I guess, <laughs> in terms of like, uh, in terms of like, uh, mentality regarding like other people, you know, but uh huh. She is a lot more of the more uh, receptive of the two of them in regards to, like, regular people. Mm -hmm. So. What I was going to say was, um, like, of course, like, I think she is farther, but, like, also because, like, Riot, while Reen, like, tries really hard to, like, learn as much as she can, blah, blah, blah. Um, she's been, like, focusing on how to hone her skills specifically for the Grail. Oh, yeah, specifically for the Holy Grail work, yeah. Whereas Alko is learning as much as she can and be as best as she can. Yeah, just cause. Just, just cause. There is no, not that there's no end goal, because I'm sure she's also chasing it because her sister gave up. And now she's the one, so there's, like, a lot of pressure to be mm -hmm. better than her sister. Because her sister left the family basically right at least that's what it feels yeah. like she's said to be she's it's... said to be prodigal in terms of like uh in terms of like magical power and everything mm -hmm. but she's not like uh but she does like experience a lot of failure in regards to me in regards to like magecraft and like yeah. even when she does things on her uh even when she does things on her own a lot of the time she ends up failing mm -hmm. um she tried to shoot Sojuro from like 10 feet away and missed. Right. <laughs> Which was still really funny because she was like, how the fuck did I miss? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we can play this off. We can play this off. <laughs> <laughs> I won't miss next time. And it's like, uh, you might. <laughs> but yeah, and then you have, but she also was learning a lot from Alice because Alice is supposed to be her teacher. Yeah. The thing I really want to know is I want to know how they met up. Like, like were their families like, oh, I have a daughter that's around that age. Oh, I've got a granddaughter that's around that age. Now let's put them in a giant mansion together. Fair, yeah. <laughs> and hope for the best. 
Yes. <laughs> also, I love how every single Tight Moon game, there is a mansion. There is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I just at think least that's one. Really funny. <laughs> there's at least one. There's at least one. Sometimes there's multiple. In in Fate, I think there's three. <laughs> Fate, there are, there is like three of them. Yeah. Well, it, it depends you, on it depends count, on how. If you count Shiro's house, because Shiro's house is kind of big. It, it's, it's more big. Like it's a, not like a man. It's not a mansion, it's but not it is a big. Mansion, but it has a lot of like floor space. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a dojo, there's multiple rooms, there's a courtyard. I think that can be considered a, a one-story mansion. Right. So technically, there's four because you have the um, you have so you have, you have Shiro's house, Rin's house, Sakura's house, and the Eidsburn Burn uh, Castle. Yeah. There's four bitches in that. <laughs> he said you. <laughs> They were like, you know what? You saw one chance. You, you said, well, you saw one. Let's make it four. <laughs> It'd be great. Don't worry about it. <laughs> It'd be like that. Also, I love how the light is only on the teacup. Yeah. Just ominous teacup. Anyway. <laughs> That's it. You were talking for what seemed like forever. Yeah, because you forced yourself into the snow, alcohol. <laughs> it's not even snowing, but... You got the, the cold. cold. It's the cold. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> Relentless, Alco continued her line of questioning. Alice only s stared back icily. Alco, Anata. I love how the, the, the music just drops. stops. Alco, I know you were eavesdropping. She voiced her displeasure at Alco's behavior in no certain terms. Suddenly, the air in the foyer felt cold as ice. Someone left the door open. <laughs> They stared at one another, each trying to guess the other's next move. So you did notice. This doesn't change anything about our deal. I hope that's clear. Alko widened her stance and glared at Alice. I'm a reasonable person, Alko. It's fine with me if you take 30%. Completely unperturbed by Alko's warlike posture, a simple look was all Alice needed to keep her roommate in check. Taking 30% of the Down from all of that? <laughs> Not a chance. Fly too high, and you may lose those wings, Alko. Ooh. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Alice remained calm and dignified, not moving a muscle. It felt like hours passed as the two stared at each other in silence. Alko was grinding her teeth in frustration. At this rate, their alliance would be in tatters before they even confronted their foe. And worst of all, she knew Alice had the upper hand. Genki. Cheapskate. Alko accepted her defeat with a tsk. Fine. You get 60, I get 40. It pained her to settle for less. Alice nodded in satisfaction. Very well. But I'm the head of the house. And you're the one who brought him here. So it's your job to collect rent. 
Fine. Oh, I should have gone into alchemy instead. Then all my problems would have been solved. Not really. Not even alchemists are immune to market downturns. Alice spoke with the confidence of someone with first-hand experience of such matters, yet Aku only nodded absentmindedly in response. <laughs> Their bitter fight was over how, it's, how to split the, split the take of Sojuro's rent, now that he was officially going to move in. <laughs> Not the most becoming quarrel for a pair of mages. Oh my god. Forcing a boy to live with them and then demanding he pay rent was beyond extortion. It was truly vicious. Since we're even discussing this, I assume that means you've accepted his presence in the mansion? Aku was triumphantly satisfied with herself. The one thing I've accepted is my responsibility for not catching him with the bounded field in the park that night. I mean, it's not as if I can blame it all on you and your promise to him. Oh, that promise. Aoko looked up at the ceiling as she recalled the night at the amusement park. Where I, where she decked him in the face. <laughs> Only a week at most had passed since then, but Aoko already felt that Sojuro's fate and her own had become in, intrinsically linked. Or perhaps they had always been connected by fate since the moment they had met. She could not see into the future, so there was no way to know for sure. Destiny and fate aside. He's not a bad egg. Besides being weird, I mean. A thought uttered to herself in self-confirmation more than to Alice. Alice could only look at annoyance. Perhaps in an attempt to voice her displeasure at her comment. Do you know about his injury, Alko? Oh, they're talking about the neck. Are they? Please, they? give me something. Give me. Come on. Yes, yes, give it to me. Give it, give, 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 give. Injury? What injury? Alice raised her slender... Can we stop talking about <laughs> her fingers? Please. Fingies. <laughs> Alice raised her slender fingers to her mouth, mouth, as if to push the words back in. I thought you were going to say fingies. <laughs> Alice raised her slender fingies to her mouth. <laughs> Alice raised her slender fingies to her mouth, as if to push the words back in. She had blurted it out in the heat of the moment. A secret that no one else was supposed to know but that which one couldn't keep to herself. Give it to us. Give it to us. Huh? Alko tilted her head in confusion. I see. Alice looked re relieved for some reason. Her sudden... Antipathy? Antipathy. Okay, that's what I thought it said. Her sudden antipathy towards Alko had dis dissipated as well. Ignorance is bliss, I suppose. Said Alice as she took a sip of her cold tea. She made no attempt to explain what was fortunate or why. A moment later, her beautiful face contorted in revulsion. Yuck. She abandoned the cup to the floor once more. Her black dress unceremoniously scrunched up as she stood. 
Just one sip of the underbrewed tea sent her <laughs> fleeing to the drawing room to remove the bad taste from her mouth. Dang. He tried his best. As soon as she was gone, Elko hesitatingly took the teacup in her own hands. It was almost certainly better than un better left untasted, but she could not help but wonder how Sojiro's tea could arouse such a strong response. After one small sip, she returned returned it quickly to the quietly to the floor. Yep, he should have used the tea bags like I told him to. Tummy. The expression on her face was nearly identical to that of her roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> Are you for real? For real? For real, real? For real? For real, for real? For real, real? Alright. Are you for real? <laughs> Alright, wanna keep going? Sure. Alright. What chapter were we on? We're on eight. How many chapters are there? I believe it's 14, 13, something like that. We're over halfway there. Oh. Oh. Misaki High School's winter vacation began in mid-December. The tranquil air of the school was a refreshing change of pace for the more competitive schools and their national famous, their nationally famous sports teams and exam-oriented curriculum. The empty, newly constructed building evoked images of a pure white swan descending upon a still winter lake. What? Uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> The modern school building felt alive in its stillness, in spite of the absence of its lifeblood of students. I will say it again. What? <laughs> I... How flowery of language you choose to wish on the holy night. Truly, I... Okay. Just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Most students never knew what the building used to look like. But Elko did, because she murdered a man there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they had to rebuild it. They had to cover up the body. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it was just a small, run-down, wooden building. A shadow of its former self. Oh, wait, I forgot. Mm -hmm. The other school wasn't torn down. Oh, right. It's just, it's just a little ways away, mm -hmm. and no one's, like, ever visited it. Yeah. I bet you there were bodies built, like, buried underneath it, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> the former school was never torn down, and now stood in lonely silence. It was tucked away deep in a seemingly infinite wood that stretched across the mountains. The sound of brooms sweeping dead leaves resonated in the air. The ocean of leaves had accumulated into piles as big as sand dunes, sweeping with a futile venture at this point. An ominous feeling lingered in the air, perhaps the result of two years of abandonment. So who the fuck is sweeping? <laughs> Gotta sweep, sweep, sweep! Oh, you know what I want? I want more of that girl that apparently works with Sojiro. Right. Yeah. I want more of her. I just only because I want to do a more of a Valley Girl voice, just because I think it's fun. <laughs> but also, she she intrigues me because she has a sprite. Right. Any because because okay, here's the thing, right? So like with Sukihime, it's like oh, if they have a sprite, they might just die, um, and we'll never see them again. But yeah. like with this game, if they have a sprite, that means that they're important. I mean, they might still die, but they'll be lo they'll be important enough to die. Yeah. So. Big think. 
big think big thinker especially considering in that moment it said that he was with a group of other people but she was the only one that had a sprite mm-hmm. so can we have more please big thing. <laughs> an ominous feeling lingered in the air perhaps the result of two years of abandonment Cleaning the inside of the building alone would take more than a few days to finish. Who the fuck is cleaning this abandoned building? Good question. Not to mention... <sighs> oh. Oh, right. I forgot. This is like the punishment of people who like failed exams. Yeah, the, the, the people who... Uh, yeah, the, the, um, what's it called? The, they had to stay over for their winter break, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is redhead guy. Yeah, I think so too. Ah, this sucks. We're students, damn it, not machines. We barely get any winter break and then the student council has us here doing this crap? <laughs> oh, I was right! Yeah. The misguided, the misguided youth sent here for the job wasted, no time making it clear he wanted no part in the beautification efforts. Yeah, Alka's probably still here too. Alka's just watching <laughs> in the distance, drinking some lemonade. Yeah. At least let us wear a jacket or something. It's freezing out here. Pain is beauty. <laughs> Is this part of gym class or something? Winter marathon training? All I'm saying is this. Is all I'm saying this is someone who never skips gym class. Hosuke Kinomi, Kinomi continued to mumble and grumble to himself as he reluctantly swept away at the ground. Gotta sweep, sweep, sweep. Swip, swip, swip. <gasps> the baby. Meanwhile, Sojiro silently and swiftly continued his sweeping, glaring at Kinomi out of the corner of his eye. <gasps> Sojiro glaring. The gas. What a what a development. Are you seriously trying to clean all up all this for real? There's only like forty of us out here. There's no way we're gonna get get it all cleaned up. So who cares? Anything can anything can be, can be completed with diligence, Kinomi. Stop complaining so hard. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Kinomi went back to idly swinging his broom without even glancing over to Sojiro. Mornings on the mountain were cold. There was no hint of sun in the cloudy sky above. Ashy gray lights illuminated the rest of the rear courtyard. The sharp cold of midwinter pierced through everyone's gloves, as if they did not exist. A day like this was best spent indoors, under warm blankets, but for some reason, they were out here cleaning. The special winter cleaning team. That was the name given to this elite force sent to clean up the dilapidated, overgrown mountain. The other students had put their faith into this team to fulfill this beautification mission, respecting them for their sacrifice. <laughs> the reality, however, was that this was nothing more than a ragtag, dare-losing gang of students needing remedial lessons before their exams. They were the victims of a year-long arm-twisting scheme by the student council. Who in their right mind would come out here to sweep up leaves with a blizzard looming on the horizon? Other than one of the forty assembled, none of them had any semblance of interest in the task at hand. Hey, Suzuki! Look over there! Akabane and those guys over there are roasting sweet potatoes! What is this, the fifties or something? <laughs> oh, looks like they don't even know how to roast them properly. Oh, I know. Want to grill some squid? 
Kinomi did not want to be here to begin with. It was constantly trying to break Sojiro into joining him. <laughs> but if this room, if this baby little country boy can do it, why the fuck can't you, Kinomi? <laughs> <laughs> The cleaning squad was divided into groups. Sojiro and Kinomi were in charge of cleaning behind the gymnasium. You have one thing to do, and you're going to be a piss baby about it. <laughs> nah, this is why you. This is this is why Kinomi gets no bitches. He really doesn't. <laughs> this is this is the reason why he gets no bitches. This is why he also gives horrible dating advice, because he gets no bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, fair enough. <laughs> See, Arihiko. Uh, Ar Arihiko gets bitches. Arihiko gets bitches. But he he gets bitches without trying to get bitches. Exactly. Because he's just that kind of guy. He's just that guy. You got, he's he got that, that dog in him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So, uh, I read the... <laughs> I read the Tsukihime remake, like, anthology manga, which mm -hmm. is just, like, a collection of, like, short stories and, like, uh, like, omake material. Okay. The final chapter is of, uh, like, a couple days after the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And Arihiko, uh, and, and it's told from, like, Arihiko's perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, he's, like, uh, he, he at some point saw, like, Shiki with arc wide and he was about to, like, like, reprimand Shiki for, like, you know, having, uh, <laughs> having, like, such a beautiful girlfriend, but, like, mm -hmm. he only saw her once, and then, like, in the next few um... days, uh, Shiki was, like, a lit, a little more, like, reserved and, uh, subdued than usual. So he thought he broke up? Yeah, so he thought, well, not that he broke up, but, like, that there was also, like, something else happening between, uh, uh... something else happening that he wasn't necessarily, like, uh, privy to. Mm -hmm. So, he didn't really, like, discuss it with him, but he just, but, like, at some point he kind of just, like, dragged him out of school and, like, took him to get ramen. And that's it. I love that. <laughs> He's like, buddy, you don't gotta tell me what shit you're going through. But I'm here for you. Yeah. Have some ramen. Yeah. Do you want a Do you want a Naruto egg? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. I do love the fact that 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 swirly egg is literally called the Naruto, and that is why Naruto has his name. Yeah. Because his I, because his mom was like craving ramen the entire time that she was pregnant with him, so they named him after after the swirly egg. <laughs> it's great. I love that for them. Amazing. <laughs> Anyways, cleaning gymnasium. They do be cleaning. They do. Sojiro was the leader of the platoon. Kinomi was the grunt. <laughs> of course he is. Of course. <gasps> they gave him a cute new sprite. Look at him. Look at him. He. Hold on. He. Cute. Oh my god, and he's got little gloves. He got the gloves. Such a good baby. Look, when we're finished cleaning up around this fence, you can go off and eat your sweet potato or squid or whatever it is you want because it'll be lunchtime. Sojiro said as he expertly packed his, sw his swept leaves into trash bags. Two hours had passed since they assembled on this foggy morning at 7 o'clock. Dang, 7 o'clock. Damn. While everyone else chatted and laughed at the, as they worked, Sojiro alone had worked in complete silence at the same bristling pace since he started. Holy crap. Man is goaded. Truly. <laughs> man, is, man is zooming. He truly do. He, listen, listen. That's the thing, right? When you sh Like, the thing that my father instilled in me is that if you are given a job, you show up, you shut up, and you get it done as soon as you possibly can. Yeah. Then you get to go home and take a nap. Fair enough. So true. So, like, if you have to be there at 7 a.m. and you want to go home to your, like, soft, warm bed, get that shit done quickly. Stop, like, being a bitch about it. Get it done early. Go to your bed. Yeah. 
God, Konomi! <laughs> <laughs> the sheer amount of work he put in was likely the only thing keeping him from complaining of the cold in his thin jersey. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. <laughs> Just because it sounds funny. Fair. Fair enough. Just skittering. <laughs> Come on. Let's take a break. Look at that pond. Or should I say ice skating rink? Ice skater rink? <laughs> No, on no. On second thought, it's just a pond. <laughs> Ice skate rinku. Pondo. <laughs> ah, but it's frozen solid, dude. That's how cold it is out here. Normal human can't work in these snowy conditions unless there's some kind of robot. We're gonna have to start eating each other to survive if this keeps up. Oh my god. Dude, stop being dramatic, my guy. <laughs> He's so overdramatic. <laughs> I want to know if someone has Konomi as their favorite character, because I want to know why. <laughs> why is Konomi your favorite character? Maybe we haven't gotten to the point that makes us fall in love with him. But, but like, right now, he's not selling himself to me. <laughs> right now, honestly. Arihiko? Arihiko is funny. Arihiko's funny as hell. <laughs> Arihiko was funny. Literally, first day we met him, they they were like, he, they literally had such good banter. Oh yeah, They for had sure. good best friend banter, where it was like, at that point, it's just stealing. Because he's given him so much money, and he hasn't paid him back. It's, it's like, like, at that point, it's, it's just kind of stealing. It's like, it's like, that's not a rival anymore. That's just an enemy. <laughs> that's just an enemy. That's just a straight up enemy. <laughs> Like, that, that's good, witty banter. This bitch? I, I have nothing. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I, I don't even want to say Arihiko Light, but he's like, um, you know the, the, uh, the fate thing, the fate thing that you found? Or is Kate Starry Night or whatever? <laughs> yeah, that's what he is. <laughs> he's knockoff Arihiko. Yes, he's knockoff Arihiko. Oh my god, he's the... Oh. They told a 12-year-old to try and, try and draw Arihiko from memory. Oh no. And they came up with us. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Maybe maybe there's a part where he's gonna get redeemed or whatever in, his, in our eyes and he's gonna be like the coolest shit ever. But anyways, but like Arihiko, winning. <laughs> so true. Why don't you just take a break for a minute? We got all these leaves together. Why don't we burn them and get warmed up? Nobody's really watching. Come on, let's go some squid. Please. Do you know how bad it is to burn leaves? God. Oh, jeez. No. Oh. Burn, like, if, if, a, if a good gust of wind picks up, that's burning down the whole... <laughs> Ooh. That's that's another sh that's another Fuyuki fire. <laughs> Real. Right? That's a forest fire right there. And only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Smokey. Very cool. <laughs> only you can prevent forest fires. For some reason, Konomi was droning on about his squid. Sojiro had managed to withstand the, bar the barrage of complaints from his comrade, but even he was reaching his limit. <sighs> Kinomi, please. <gasps> Tobimaru! Yo, it's him. Bro's got a Just... scarf. <laughs> of course he fucking has a scarf with Tobimaru. His hair still slicked back. Damn. <laughs> Just Impressive. then, Sojiro, Sojiro saw the Grim Reaper himself creeping behind Kinomi. In his hands, he held a rake instead of a he held a rake instead of a soft bamboo bamboo broom. 
Sounds good to me. I'll let a bit of grilled squid slide. Far, for, far be it from me to get between a big man and his squid. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll even let you. I'll even get you the soy sauce. Hmm. Konomi shot to attention of the voice behind him. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Sukiji, is that you? <laughs> Before quickly turning around, swinging his broom in the, in the process. Bro, bro, <laughs> Toby Maru jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> Toby Maru easily blocked the swing with his right. Yo! <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> it's, it's Toby Maru. <laughs> Toby Maru is like the link <laughs> of this universe. So true. Real. Oh, so now you want to use the broom, huh? Just can't complain all that hard-working spirit I see. Or just can't contain all that hard-working spirit I see. Maybe I should assign you to the special Siberian Trail, then. <laughs> all you've done is stand over by the furnace with the girls pretending like you're on a Caribbean holiday instead of, instead of out here in the freezing cold. Both boys glared at each other with a wry smile. Broom and Drake locked in an embrace. And then there's me. You're probably wondering how, how I got this <laughs> wondering how I got here. <laughs> God dang it. And that's another one. <laughs> <sighs> one brain cell, two people. Anyways... <laughs> These two were only friendly with each other on school grounds. I suppose technically, but technically, this is, this is school, school grounds. <laughs> and there's another one. <laughs> back to back, damn. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I kept. I, I hit my mic. Oops. <laughs> Tobimaru, please don't distract him any more than he already is. I want to go home. <laughs> if I'm going to make grilled squid, I'm going to make it with alcohol. <laughs> Both of them scoffed angrily and put away their weapons. If you can even call them weapons. They both knew better than to argue with Sojiro, the only one cleaning with a garbage bag in hand. Something we can help you with, Tobamaru? I thought you were too busy pretending to set and tend the fire over at the furnace. A harsh comment. Ooh. I love the little the little mouth that they give. Oh yeah, for sure. It's so cute. Apparently, even Sojiro had a slight, a slight taste for drama. So it's come to this. Even the upstanding students like you are looking down on me now. <laughs> He's an upstanding student? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, he probably did well on his exams, given that Alka, like, was like, Alright, we're gonna stay up all night and you're gonna do this bullshit. Right. Probably did okay. You know, probably passing C's. Yeah. Tobimaru seemed sad at Sojiro's observation. But as long as Tobimaru continued to claim he was helping the girls by cleaning, er, helping the girls clean by doing nothing more than standing in front of a pile of burning leaves, Sojiro found it hard to sympathize. Ah, just tell us what you want. We're actually busy doing work over here, unlike some people. Oh, is that so? Well, lucky for you, it's almost break time. Let's get warmed up over there. Oh, break time! Now you're talking. Oh, oh not for you, idiot. Only people who've actually done some work today can, get, can take a break. <laughs> if you want to come stand by the furnace, then bring me enough leaves to fill the cart. Until then, keep sweeping. 
リアカー一台分のゴミ袋なひでえ I have rights, you know. This is abuse of power. <laughs> Kenomi's complaints naturally fell on deaf ears. Tobimaro had been selected to lead the cleaning operation, and his word was final. If, Kenomi, if, Kimo, if Kenomi were to continue to push his buttons, he knew he would be on cleaning duty tomorrow. And the next day, too. <laughs> All right, here we go, people. Don't ask me why, but we have a bunch of cans of sweet red bean soup. Some meat buns would have been better, but that would have required a certain someone to use their brain. We've also got some emergency chocolate. <gasps> emergency chocolate? God damn it, what the hell was she thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Sojiro reassured Tobimaru by saying that he thought the food would be just fine for everyone. <laughs> hey, hey, Alko does love her chocolate, to be fair. To be fair. <laughs> she, and hey, she, hey, she got soup? her Nutella. <laughs> I mean, soup on a cold day? I'm sure people enjoy that. Real. You know, that feels like a very, like, classic thing to have on a super cold day. Yeah. Huh? Wait, you're not coming? Nah, I'm just gonna stay here. We can just burn some leaves to stay warm like Kenomi said. We've got a pond right here, so we can easily put it out when we're done. This was clearly for Kenomi's benefit. <laughs> Tobimaru furred his brow while Kenomi shivered from the cold. I was suffering. But like, you know. <laughs> Suffer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> is that a glimmer of friendship I just saw? You know what? You're as pure as the snow is white. <laughs> this is nuts. But wait here, Suzuki. I'm gonna go grab some potatoes from Akabane. Perhaps shy to show his true feelings, Kenomi ran off to the neighboring group. <laughs> uh, I figured you'd say that. Here. Tobimaru pulled out a hot can from his jersey pocket, scratching his head in, in exasperation. He pulled out three in all, one for each... One from each jersey pocket, and one from his pant pocket. I... Uh, how big? They're male pockets. You can fit You can fit canned beans in there. I... I guess. <laughs> but, like, I feel like it'd stick out, you know? Well, yeah, but that... But why would they be looking around his waist <laughs> when they're fighting? <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. <laughs> Let's get a fire going. I'm gonna chill over here too. I guess we both know how to deal with people, huh? Sojiro quickly prepared prepared the leaves for the fire. Carefully gathering them up for them to burn neatly. You're pretty good at that. Eh, it's easy when you have matches. <laughs> Sojiro crouched down in front of the burning leaves and warmed his hands near the flames. Even though he showed no sign of being cold underneath it all, Sojiro was cold, too. He gazed into the fire as the smoke rose from the pile of leaves, as if remembering the good times from his past. Tobimaru felt a touch of concern as he looked at Sojiro. He saw within him homesickness and retrospection. He also saw a dark shadow looming over him, like a stranger in a foreign land without a home. You don't look so good, Sojiro. I suppose I 
am a little tired. If you need to talk, I'm here for you. Just let me know. Toby Mara continues speaking with the pull tab from the can of sweet red bean soup still around his index finger. Sojiro was focused on the fire. Oh yeah. While you were taking a break from school, Aozaki plugged me. She said I've got a big mouth. <laughs> sounds right. Sounds right, buddy. <laughs> sounds, sounds about right. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense, because he was gone for, like, two days, because he was, like, out of commission. Right. And, of course, she would slug him, because he's the reason that she had the misconception about Sozuro. Right. <laughs> I love that. Ah. Wow, congr wow, congratulations. Oh, my God, Sozuro, that's not something to be congratulating her about. Sometimes, Sozuro would reply incoherently like this. Oh, yeah, of course we know that. <laughs> I know we know that, but like, honey, <laughs> Toby Mara chalked it up to cultural differences. Uh, sure. <laughs> Say, how are things going with Aozaki anyway? You used to walk with her to the train station before exams. Have things been going well since then? It was obvious to everyone that that was far from the case, yet Toby Mara asked anyway. Yeah, we live together now. Sojiro went with the truthful, blunt response. Oh, well, I see, I see. That was quick. Dating already, huh? Tobimaru tried to laugh off Sojiro's all-too-casual confession. However... Wait, you live together? Uh, are you okay, Tobimaru? Did a spark hit you? No, worse. My friend just said the wildest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Sojiro protested Tobimaru's reply with silence. You're not joking, are you? One day, you're barely interested in girls, and the next, you're shacked up with one? Well, not just one. <laughs> it's Alko. Well, actually, not well, not just with one. Is that just it's Alko? Two. Well, I it's guess Alko. there's technically another one. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not really part of the equation, except I had to make sure she liked me before I was officially accepted into the house. Sojiro, you have a lot more game than I thought. <laughs> Sojiro, teach me your secrets. What secrets? <laughs> Fishbowl eyes. <laughs> Toby Morrow had always felt he had that he and Sojiro were an equal match strength-wise, but for some reason he could not shake the feeling that Sojiro was now his superior in the brain department. It hit me like that. <laughs> listen, listen. He's got fishbowl eyes. <laughs> Sojiro cast a rare, angry glare in Tobimaru's direction. That was awfully rude. What do you mean I'm not interested in girls? <laughs> Sojiro seemed genuinely angry, and his voice was icy. This uncharacteristic level of anger from Sojiro was enough to get Tobimaru to back down. Holy crap, I, I, I've struck a nerve. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm, I was out of line. I just assumed a few things. I apologize. But seriously, what do you mean you're living with? This seems way too too fast for you. It's not what you think. I'm just renting a room in her house. <laughs> His little face! <laughs> He's such, hold on. He's such a good boy. There we go. He's such a good baby. It's up in the attic, but it reminds me of a mountain cottage, so I kind of like it. 
Tobimaru did not bat an eyelid at hearing that Sojuro now lived in an attic, and continued his questioning. Alright, sure, the attic, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> girls. I mean, we're talking about that mansion, right? The Kuonji mansion? This is out of this world! What kind of wizard are you to pull that off? Well, actually... Right. Actually, they're the wizards. <laughs> To be fair. Well, actually, uh, right. Anyway. I, I, like, anyway. I like my tongue. Um, <laughs> friendship. <laughs> huh? You know the place, Topamaru? Oh, come on, dude. You're talking to the heir of the Tsukiji throne here. Of course I know about the mansion where the first daughter of Kuonji group lives. She's a sophomore at the Ryan R. Girls Academy, right? Rayan? Ryan? I I think we decided on Rayan. Rayan. She's a sophomore at the Rayan Girls Academy, right? Kuonji... Nani? Kuonji... What? <laughs> Sojiro was looking more confused than ever, so Tobimaru reluctantly explained everything as simply as he could so Sojiro could understand. The Kuonji group. Well, they're more like a foundation, really. All you need to know is, the whole family is loaded and they all company. They're not quite a conglomerate, but they're a big deal in the East, in the exports industry. I was about to say eSports. <laughs> in the eSports? No, yeah. Her, her dad is like, And welcome to the Fortnite tournament! <laughs> God, 1989 Fortnite. Yeah, I don't know. What games were really popular in the 80s? Probably Le nah, Donkey um... Kong. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I also Arcade was gonna game. say Legends of Zelda. Fair. Legend huh? of Zelda had come out at that point, because right. the Game Boy was out, so... Mortal Kombat. People... Yeah, Mortal Kombat. Okay, fair More Oh, probably esports Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! Did you guys know? I didn't know this until I watched the first Mortal Kombat movie that that song was made for oh, that movie. movie. I didn't know that. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Mortal Kombat is one of the games that made the ESRB. Actually, wait, okay. no. It wouldn't have been, uh... Mortal Kombat wouldn't have been, because what year does this take place? 89. 89, okay, yeah, no, it wouldn't, because the first Mortal Kombat was until 92. Oh, damn. So, yeah. Well, no, nor Mortal Kombat. Well, we have Legend of Zelda speedruns. <laughs> That's what we have. <laughs> Mortal Kombat! <laughs> They used to operate out of England because their old chairman loved the place, but things went south about five years ago, so they moved all their operations back here. Since their son took over, things have rebounded for them, and that's why you see their name plastered around town. They contributed, like, half the funds required to rebuild our school. <laughs> Damn. Despite the oversimplified ex explanation, Sojuro still seemed to not be getting it. With that, Tobimaru decided to give up on trying to explain. Oh, look, they're rich. <laughs> look, they're very rich, and you are friends with a very rich lady. <laughs> and you are living in a house with a creepy rich lady. Oh my god, he actually... <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're filthy rich, okay. You know that coffee place you work at? The Kuonjis bought their, that franchise here. Now they're a national chain. Okay, so they're very rich and very important. Huh. Weird. If that's the case, then why is she so frugal all the time? So Jiro mumbled incoherently to himself. Oh, probably because she doesn't want to borrow money from her family. Fair. Tobimaru looked at him with a complex expression on his face, somewhere between envy and heartfelt sympathy. Well, whatever the case, you've done good for yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the truth, though. 
when a guy and a girl are living under the same roof, only one thing can be happening, am I right? Like magic? <laughs> That's a surprisingly old-fashioned thought for you to have, Topamaru. <laughs> oh, give me a break. What kind of guy is afraid to talk about this kind of stuff? What, are you gonna tell me you're afraid to hold hands? <laughs> I suppose you're right. So, the truth is... Though Sojiro and Alko were living together, there were there was absolutely no chemistry between them. Though that was not to say that living in such close quarters as they did, unintended mishaps did not occur from time to time. But even still... You'd be surprised how nothing like that... You'd be surprised how nothing like that goes on. The mansion is pretty huge, after all. Everyone was often busy with their own affairs, so there was no opportunity for that sort of thing to happen. Oh my god, can you imagine if he was like, well, I have been inside a room. <laughs> Fair. I mean, answer me this. Would you suddenly make advances on, on Alco just because you were living on the same roof? I love how you said Alco instead of Aozaki. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> nope. Never. Tomimaru nodded intently, as if he was thinking back on his many ex ex relationships. Dude is having a flashback. Several. <laughs> He's having a nom nom flashback. Several, in fact. <laughs> mm -hmm. Several nom flashbacks. Well. This all sounds very... Yeah, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> Sotaro gave no more than a quick affirmation to Tobimaru's dis uh, despondent murder, murmuring. Not murder, a murmur. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing great, he was doing fine. But besides his physical health, it was surely Sojiro's personality that enabled him to maintain any semblance of peace dealing with both Alko and Alice while living in that mansion. On an unrelated note, I'm totally indebted to Aozaki. I'm not sure how, can I, how I can ever repay her for what she's done for me. I love how he basically says that as if he, like, got scooped off the street like a dying kid. Fair, yeah. <laughs> Sojiro's eyes turned slightly serious as he stared into the fire. Dobimaru felt that there was more to those words th than that Sojiro was letting laugh. So you are a big time, huh? Sojiro merely nodded in silence at Tobimaru's inquis inquisitive no acknowledgement. And just then, is, she, is Alco just gonna speak of the devil and she shall appear? Oh, oh no, a strange scream pierced through the still silence of the woods like a knife. Oh, someone found a dead body. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah, and yeah, it was Kenomi. Oh, <laughs> well, well, it's fine, it's all good. So, somebody found a dead body. <laughs> Sojiro had already stood up before he responded. I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure it's fine. He bolted to the frozen pond, broke broke the ice with his broom, scooped up some of the frigid water in a bucket, and threw it onto the fire, all in less than ten seconds. Dang. Then he immediately ran off into the depths of the woods from, from where he heard the scream. Tobimara followed after him in panicked confusion. Tobimaru, do you know what do you know what's down this way? The remains of the old school building should be there. Anything else? You know, like a pack of wild dogs or bad stuff like that? <laughs> huh? No, dude. If anything, it should be just some deer or rabbits or something. Then there's nothing to be afraid of. Let's hurry. Perhaps because of his time spent growing up in the mountains, Sojiro quickly sprinted over the slippery dead leaves. 
Toby Mara was not particularly cautious himself, but nevertheless he could not keep up with Sojuro in, in here. Before long, Sojuro found himself running alone. Dang. <laughs> when piles of leaves blocked the natural tra trail, he would sometimes knock them away with both hands and sometimes expertly slip through them. It was clear that he was used to dealing with this level of nature. After a few minutes, Sojiro arrived at a clearing. The well of trees had ended. It was an a it was an a it was an obviously man made clearing here on the mountainside. In the distance was what looked like an old wooden school building. It was a small, aesthetically pleasing building no larger than an elementary school, lost in the depths of the winter wilderness. Kinomi! Kinomi! Kinomi stood alone at the old school's ground. Hey, what are you doing here, Suzuki? A sour expression came over Sojiro's face as Kinomi tilted his head in confusion. It's liter I can't, Kinomi, it better not be literally nothing. Come, what are you, what are you doing here? Did you see a drop of blood and get all squibbly? Jesus Christ. What the fuck? That's what I want to know. What was that scream all about? Huh? What scream? I was just pissed at this dumb kid. Look, there he is. Now he's got some potatoes on him. God damn it, we let him run off inside. Kenobi pointed resentfully towards the old school building. You gotta be kidding me. Kenobi, what the you hell are you doing? Kenobi? Kenobi? Get fucked. <sighs> I mean that literally. You need, you need to get some steam out of your system. Like, just go. Do something. Productive. Please. There was indeed somebody standing at the entrance of the school building, just over 300 feet in the distance. What the hell is he doing up here anyway? Is this where kids hang out nowadays? Probably. It's empty. Do some graffiti. Kunomi shrugged his shoulders to signal how little he cared what with the young what the young children did with their time. This place was deep in the woods, but it was not particularly dangerous. Sojiro had run through the woods to get here, but there was also a paved road leading to this spot from outside the woods, too. Kunomi apparently followed the road to get here. Hmm? A child? Sojuro yeah. squinted. Yeah. He had blonde hair, which kind of freaked me out at first. Poor kids are scary, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, red hair. <laughs> I know it's not natural, but like, bitch. <laughs> It was indeed quite rare to see a foreigner in a, in a provincial town such as Misaki. Sojiro had never even seen a foreigner in person, which made the whole thing even more mysterious. Why did why'd you feel the need to run all the way up here again? Why'd you feel the need to run all the way up here again? Eh, Akabane said that stupid kid stole their food, so I was chasing him down and ended up here. Since you're here, let's steam up and see if we can catch him. That's a little medicine, Kinomi. Sojiro could not find it in him to agree with his plan. It seemed unfair to team up against a little kid. Come on, let's just head back. That kid was over there just staring at us. And besides, if Tomomaru sees us here slacking off, we're gonna be cleaning the mountain if we no break. 
Sojiro took Kenobi by the shoulder and began leading him back the, down the path he came from. Kenobi cast one lazy, last gaze at the old school building before reluctantly following. Hmm. Great. Can you imagine if it's like fucking Mario? <laughs> Can you imagine? Just then, Toby Morrow appeared panting and out of breath. <gasps> How are you so fast? <laughs> Toby Morrow could, could hardly catch his breath. He arrived about three minutes behind Sojiro, desperately, de despite having a good set of legs on him. So what's going on? Are you alright, Kenobi? Huh? Y yeah, I'm fine. What about you, your highness? Kenomi seemed perplexed at Toby Maru's first ever display of concern for him. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You're out here in the middle of nowhere screaming bloody murder. What am I supposed to think? We were worried. That was my fault. I guess I jumped to conclusions. You probably never heard him do it, but sometimes a word Konomi has this habit of letting out a weird yell like that. <laughs> Konomi looked disapproving at Sojiro nonchalantly sharing this insight. This was the first time he ever heard it. He, he had ever heard of it. Wow, okay. Wow, okay. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying it. You're up to something, aren't you? Of course not. Come on, Tobimaru. There's cleaning to be done. Sojiro pat Tobimaru on the shoulder a couple times and started walking. Pat, pat, pat. <laughs> Tobimaru cast a doubtful glare in his direction as he men uh, meandered. Mendered? Meandered. Meandered off. He had a feeling that Sojiro was covering for sh for Kinomi somehow. You didn't set the old school building on fire or something, did you? <laughs> of course not. Who would even do that? Sojiro kept walking and didn't even look at Tobimaru as he spoke. Tobimaru and Kinomi tilted their heads in confusion as they reluctantly followed the unusually aggressive Sojiro back to their cl cleaning spot. And so, the special winter cleaning team's activities ended un uneventfully. Well, that was... kind of sus. Oh. What's with the blonde kid? I... Hmm. I don't like well, it. I, we didn't even get to see the blonde kid. I know, that's what makes me hit not like that's, it. Hmm. I don't like it. Okay, sure. The time was three in the afternoon. Upon departing, Kenomi and his crew in invited Sojiro to come hang out with them, but he declined politely due to his job that evening. He had about two hours until the shift began. Not quite enough time to do anything fun, but just enough time to have to, have to fill it with something. So he's going to go talk to his friends. <laughs> Sojiro thought about relaxing in a park somewhere, but quickly changed his mind after remembering how cold it was, even in the city. Not to forget that Akko handed him those pills this morning. Akko was ab absolutely correct in her prediction. Heading back to the mansion now would just be a waste of time. There was no reason for him to return to the mansion until after his shift at work. Still, Sojiro found himself on the way back anyway. <laughs> Having grown up deep in the mountains, a little two-hour walk was really no sweat of, off his back. Misaki was one of the more quiet residential areas in Misaki City. The only thing that really stood out here was Shiro Inuzuka. 
there was a hill that led directly into the woods. The silhouette of the mountains served a backdrop to suburbia, silently overshadowing the small human actions of the people who lived there. Even in the modern day of technology, prog technolo technological progress, the people here were always careful to pay reverence to the, na to the nature around them. I don't like the way that this city is set up, by the way. Really? Because the city itself feels so condensed and, like, so kind of claustrophobic, and then suddenly there is woods. Oh, yeah, no, okay. I, I get what you're saying. That's fair. Because, like, it just, it's like, it's like so many apartment buildings, and then a school, and then, like, you can see her little castle house in the distance. Right. But it's like a condensed little circle of houses and then suddenly woods i think that's kind of like the point i suppose no i'm i'm sure that's the point and i'm sure that's like especially from sojiro's perspective it's like it, it's like the freeing woods versus like the claustrophobic city mm -hmm. but like i feel icky sure <laughs> Like, looking at how, like, the, like, that pan up of, like, how the city looks from, like, the street onward. Like, I hate that. I'm not a big city person. I'm far more, like, suburbia, like, offshoots, like, little, little, just little, little communities. I don't like dense cities. It's not, ugh, I don't like it. Ugh. Yeah, fair. Icky. <laughs> <laughs> If that mansion were a shrine, it would not be a haunted house, but a famous tourist attraction. Wait, I just realized something. The house around Shiro Inazuka was, the, though the houses around Shiro Inazuka were all magnificent. Sojiro understood as he looked from the bottom of the hill where the rest of the town lived at the roof of the mansion tucked away in the woods. He understood that Tobimaro, what Tobimaro was talking about, about how the Kuanji family who owned the mansion might be the richest people in town. They really do hate me. Why else would they ask for rent? <laughs> Sojiro began walking towards the mansion with such thoughts simmering in his mind. I would bet money that it's just because she doesn't want to ask her family for money. Fair. <laughs> the feeling of the feeling of the hard asphalt beneath his feet instead of soft dirt felt lonely and isolating. It's probably why he liked cleaning so much. Fair. <laughs> Maybe he didn't, well, maybe he didn't like cleaning, he just kind of, like... He just liked being outside, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. He walked along the paved road for ten minutes or so before reaching the iron fence of the wood. <laughs> Beyond this fence was the private property of the Kuanji family. It was... Bereft? 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 Bereft, yeah. Or bereft, yeah. It was bereft of any uh, awkward no trespassing signs. It would be really funny if it had one, though. It really would. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it says something like, there is no dog, but there is death. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The tall, overbearing iron fence was more than enough to rem remind visitors that they were unwelcome here. So Jiro casually pus pushed on the iron gate. Only two days had passed since the end of final exams, and he already seen seemed more than comfortable with the idea of entering this wood alone. The path to the mansion from inside the wood curved and bent like a snake.
took about fifteen minutes to reach the mansion on this path. He could have chosen to ignore the long incline and travel in a straight line through the wood. But he would have expen expended significantly more energy in doing so. No, using the wooded path was the sensible option, bearing an emergency. Upon entering the foyer, Sojiro, headed, uh, Sojiro heard a conversation coming from the drawing room. There's no doubt Aoko and Alice, Sojiro decided to join them. Ever since final exams had ended, Aoko and Alice had switched from their daily routine to a more irregular schedule. Alko would disappear into Alice's room in the west wing of the mansion for a while, where she would remain. And Alice would go into Alko's room, not to be seen again. Or they would vanish into the corridors leading around to the rear mansion, doing who knows what, where Sojiro was most certainly not allowed to enter. Not that he was interested in what they were doing, since Alco and Alice did not seem to want to include him either, serving both parties nicely. For the time being, the Kawanji estate was pretty peaceful. Tadaima. I'm home. Sojiro quietly opened the door to the drawing room. Even though they tried not to be involved in each other's business, Sojiro made it a habit to greet them. The two girls sat across from him on the sofa. On the table in front of them was a large, extravagantly decorated mirror. Can you imagine he walks in, he gets sucked into it? Oh god, no! <laughs> Alko was dressed for comfort, wearing jeans instead of her usual skirt. In stark contrast, Alice was dressed in her usual all black. I don't think she owns another outfit. No, me neither. Besides her school uniform. Yeah. Like, it's all of her closet is just her school uniform. Yep. And then the coat and babushka that she wore that one time. <laughs> Even though the break from school was well underway... The witch still insisted on wearing black. <laughs> okay. As Alko had explained, it was probably because it was too much effort for Alice to wear anything else. Sojuro's thoughts was that it, it would, that he would like to see her wear something different. Alko and Alice seemed to be in the middle of some sort of dispute. The air in the drawing room was tense. They both ignored his greeting. Ouch. Damn. Alice only briefly looked up at him. Hmm. What about the Tokawa point? That pillar is white, so hopefully it won't be so easy to remove. Yes, the, the Tokawa one is still active, but the Suzuho support next to it has gone, so we can't really be, so we can't really be too careful. With each sigil they discover, they get better at finding the others. That makes sense. I guess once they found one, they can easily find the other connections. You really messed up. I should have been more careful. It's going to turn into a weekly battle soon. The two continued their heated discussion from opposite sides of the table. Alko neglected to even glance up at Sojiro. Yikes. Damn. Sojiro sensed that she wanted to concentrate on the discussion at hand. Look at her in his cute jacket. <laughs> it's so strange, though. 
Setting aside the timing of the puppet that night, now quickly they were able to find our our expertly hidden sigil. Whoever it is is, more, is most definitely whoever it is most definitely has to have some kind of hideout in the city. But if that's the case, why aren't we detecting any or abnormalities in the field? The dragnet around Misaki City hasn't even broken for nearly a hundred years. Ako bit her nails nervously while Alice nodded along. It seemed as though she was wondering the same thing. Even my mother wasn't able to touch this bounded field. The only person capable of getting through Misaki's bounded field would have been your grandfather or an even more capable mage. Hmm. Hmm. That's a... Like the green-dressed lady? I'm... I'm frightened. Who, who totally... Who totally wasn't cheating at the... The Plinko machine or whatever the fuck it was? <laughs> the Pachinko machine? Pachinko, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, she's fine. I'm sure it's all right. I'm sure. You know. It's fine. Everything's okay. It's all good. It's all good, too. All good in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but someone ex exuding that level of magical energy would find it would find it that much harder to cover his or her tracks. It could be some kind of unique concealment ward. I haven't heard anything about any new fairy circles forming these past few years. Where was it? Sherwood Forest? The Knight was able to break through your mist, remember? Do you think there's some sort of concealment stronger than that? All I'm saying is it is... All I'm saying is, if whoever we're dealing with has the skills greater than our own, maybe there are some... there are some techniques we aren't aware of. Either way, we need to... Reevaluate things. We might be un we might be under more pressure than we thought. The two fell silent. Sojiro, after some internal deliberation, decided to break the silence. Yeah, Tadaima. So I'm home. Aku finally looked at, looked up at him in response to his hesitant declaration. <laughs> He's just like, huh? That's fine, Sojuro, but will you please take a bath? You're dirty. And with that, Alko returned her gaze to the mirror. That's rude. <laughs> Alice briefly looked at Sojuro again before also returning her gaze to the mirror. Perhaps feeling at least somewhat satisfied that his greeting was acknowledged, Sojuro left the drawing room and closed the door behind him. Elko was right. His clothes were a little soiled. Yeah, it's a waste of water, but I guess I should. Sojuro returned to his room, thinking that a bath might actually feel pretty nice in the cold water, in the cold weather despite not really having broken a sweat at all during the day. He climbed the stairs from the foyer up to the second flight into the attic. Like the other rooms in the mansion, this one had no frills to, to its decor. It's a little cumbersome to use, such a, use as a living space, but comfortable enough for Shoujiro. Everywhere else in the mansion was a little too gaudy for his taste. As far as shelter and a place to sleep went, Shoujiro was more than satisfied with his com accommodations. There 
was no electricity in the attic. Which, he did, it's not like he even knew how to really work electricity in the first place. Right, I'm sure he doesn't mind. <laughs> he probably froze it, to be honest. Honestly, yeah. He was amazed by how phones worked. Yeah. <laughs> the only light was that which crept in from a small skylight. Not that Sojiro minded. He was more accustomed to living without electricity than living with it. Oh, what did I say? <laughs> what did we what just did we just say? say? <laughs> with only the faint winter light to guide him he readied a change of clothes and a towel before heading down to the foyer despite the magnificent size of the mansion there was only one bath in the whole building uh, hmm joy that feels a little inefficient but alright yeah I guess it's one of those things where it's like that you build the house, but like if you're gonna have people over, they're gonna stay for like a night. Right. Hmm. It's not a particularly large one at that. Whoever the art and architect was, he or she must not have thought a bath to be so important, or perhaps there was no, or perhaps they were not the bath type. Uh, I, uh, fair enough, I guess. True. Maybe some of the rooms have showers, but they're not baths. It is a western style house. Yeah. Mm. Also, I love that like we just hear his little footsteps, but like they keep going as if there's like mo like even more steps in there. How many stairs are there? Oh my god. <laughs> Sanjiro descended to the foyer and made his way to the to the back of the stairs. Remind me cuz you haven't seen um I can't think of what the movie is called right now, but it's got, uh, I can't even think of his name. Is. I'll figure it out what the movie is. It's got the mad, uh, it's got the dance magic dance song in it. I showed it to you where he, where, uh, he's a famous singer. Oh, and I can't think of what his name is. David Bowie. Okay. David Bowie kidnaps a baby. What? That's, that's the movie. Uh. He plays, he plays a king. Uh, from an, another world. Oh, and right. Yes, I forget what the movie is called, but the this labyrinth, girl is like, right? God, the labyrinth. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, but in it, there's a scene where there's like multiple like stairs, and that's what he's trapped in. <laughs> that's what they trapped him in. I'll have to send you a picture of it. But like, that's what he's trapped in. <laughs> that that's why we hear so many footsteps. Oh God. He. He knocked on the on the door to the bath. As expected, there was no answers from the other side. The only other two occupants of the mansion were still talking in the drawing room. Fair, yeah. At least he knocks. Mm -hmm. After confirming it was unoccupied, Sojiro quietly entered the bathroom. Even though Sojiro was not aware of it himself, as was common with him. The only hobby he had acquired since coming down from the mountain was taking a nice, relaxing bath. Sojiro had left, but the two girls were still locked in their heated discussion. That was like the quickest bath ever. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, the topic of the conversation was still that of the outsider, uh, the outsider mage who had, who had appeared in Misaki City last month. This was, after all, the problem that had uh, occupied their time before, before this whole situation with Sojiro arose, dealing with and eliminating the interloper who had set his or her sights on their territory. Interloper. Dang, he's... This interloper. <laughs> so I think we should stop here, because I'm getting sleepy. Okay, yeah. No and it's 3.30 it's in the That's morning. That's absolutely so. fair. <sighs> so, thank you all for watching part 12. I'm pretty sure this is part 12. That's a lot of parts. Uh, 
I know. Yeah. It's probably I I would bet you we're gonna we're gonna it's gonna be seventeen parts. Oh my god. Tsugimi right. should have been seventeen Call parts, SMH. That's that's what I'm saying, is that if this is roughly about as long as Tsukihime, this is probably gonna be about seventeen parts, maybe twenty. Yeah. Maybe was Tsukihime again? Tsukihime was about fourteen? It could have been Uh yeah. No, it was fourteen. Yeah, well, yeah, fourteen. But if we had, but if we had actually started recording from the minute that we started like playing the game right. to when it ended, it probably would have been at least sixteen, seventeen. Oh yeah, parts. sure, for sure. So. Yeah, because we started on like day three, so. Mhm. Mm and the first few days were pretty. Mostly exposition. Yeah, mostly exposition. <laughs> well, yeah, the first few days were mostly exposition, and like there was already like stuff in the. Yeah, we had the melted dog. <laughs> no one got to experience yeah. the melted yeah. dog with yeah, us. Yeah, and even and even then, there was already there's all the the stuff at the hospital, stuff with Alco, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So, but anyways, everyone say good night. Good night. Good, good morning. People. Later, gamers. Bye for now. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go buzz off now. Bye.